All right, so welcome back to another episode. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and fetch the data on the front end from the back end. So essentially, in the last episode, we were able to get all of the mutual guilds, which means all of the guilds that the bot and the user is in, as well as the as well as what correct permissions the user has. So if you saw, we were able to uh, filter all of the guilds that the user did not have admin permissions for, and then we checked to see uh, which guilds that the user and the bot were both in. And if we make the API call, it's supposed to give us these two guilds, which we're going to want to uh, render over here. So this is the page that we're going to fetch it from. Okay. I also did add it. I also did add some. Uh, I also did add some uh, icons just to make it look nicer. And I'll show you how we can actually render the icon. You can see that when I refreshed before, the icon field was null because we didn't have an icon, but now it has the actual hash for the icon. And I'll show you how we can actually get the. Uh, Get the actual icon from this hash. Okay, it's very easy. So let's go into our uh, React code. We're gonna go ahead and go inside the menu page, and right over here, this is where we want to actually fetch all of the guilds. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a custom hook for this. Before I do that, though, I'm gonna go inside the API.ts file. This is where I'm gonna implement all the functions that will handle API calls. So we're gonna go ahead and do export const get. Uh, mutual guilds okay and we're gonna do axios.gets uh so this is going to be an array of partial guilds so what i'll do is i'll actually go into the backend code so i'm in the nest.js code base i'm going to go ahead and copy this partial guild type that i created earlier and i'm going to go ahead and paste that in right over here inside types.ts in the react uh project so that way we're pretty much reusing the same type, okay? And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm gonna go ahead and type annotate uh, the response type or the data for the response data for Axios. So it's gonna be a partial guild, an array of partial guilds. And we're gonna go ahead and just pass in the URL. Whoops, slash API slash discord slash guilds. And uh, let's go ahead and pass in the config as well. Yeah, we do need the config. Okay, uh, I think that's pretty much all we need to worry about. Let's go ahead and create the custom hook called use fetch guilds.tsx. And this is just going to be a custom hook to just uh, keep this, keep track, to encapsulate the state of the mutual guilds. So that way we don't have to like do all of that inside the menu page itself. And I should call this use fetch mutual guilds, but I'll just leave it alone like this for now. Okay. So we're going to implement the use effect hook inside the callback function of use effect. We're going to call get mutual guilds. We're going to go ahead and handle everything accordingly. Okay. We're not done yet, obviously, but uh, let me add the dependency array, which is an empty one. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're first going to go ahead and create a state variable using the use state hook. And this is going to be an array of partial guilds or undefined. Okay, by default, it's undefined. And it will be defined once we actually uh, update the state. Okay, uh, next, what we're going to do is for the callback function for dot then, we're going to go ahead and destructure. Whoops. What's going on here? But then, not sure why that's data dots. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so we're just going to set guilds like that. Okay, and if there's an error, we will go ahead and log it. We'll also, we'll also create a loading variable as well. And then we'll create a variable for set error. Okay. And so when we first call this hook, set loading will be set to true. And then we will set loading to false in the finally call that function. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead. And also last thing we've set the error as well. Okay. Now we can go ahead and return everything, return the guilds, loading, and error. So what we're doing essentially 
is very similar to what we've done with whenever we make API calls from the React app to the backend. We're pretty much set loading to true. So that will set the status of the API call because uh, it's currently fetching, right? So we'll set that status to true. So that way, if it hasn't returned anything yet, we can display like a spinner. Uh, once the promise has been fulfilled, we'll handle it using dot then. We'll update the state of guilds by passing in data, which is an array of partial guilds. And we'll catch any errors and set the, uh, the value of error. And then once everything is done, we will set loading to false. And then we're just going to return all three of these uh, variables. So we go into the menu page and we can literally go right over here, call use fetch guilds like that. And we can just destructure everything. So let's get the guilds loading and error. I might change the name of error later. Okay. But now we can go ahead and get rid of mock guilds. I'll actually just comment this out because we will need this. We will need this. Uh, not, not we will need it. Uh, we will need like, we will, we'll need to like, we'll need like, the similar code, okay? But I, I do want to do this though. Uh, if loading, I want to return a spinner. So I'm going to do, I'm going to actually do this. Uh, or we'll return the, the guilds. So I'll show you how this is going to work. So let's say for example, if it's loading, return loading, else done. And let me show you how this is going to work. Let's refresh. There we go. You can see that when I refresh the page, it goes from loading to done. So I want to show a spinner. So let me do that real quick. So I'll do, uh, let's see, moon loader size 20 color white. Hopefully that works. Yeah, so it's not going to spin. You can see that it's kind of frozen. The reason why is it, like this moon loader actually has to be in a flex box. There we go. So you can see that it does that. Uh, we could probably center this. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Let's change the size to 50 maybe. Let's do 40. Okay, perfect. That, that's fine. I, I, I'm okay with that. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually do this. I'm going to uncomment this out right over here. Copy this, move this down here. Though I don't think I don't think that would like that though. Yeah, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh let's see. Oops. Copy that inside here. So instead of mock guilds now, it's just gonna be guilds. Uh and it's giving an it's giving us issue saying guilds is possible to find. We'll do loading and uh so if it's loading, we want to display this. Um, we'll do guilds and guilds. How about that? That's better. It's a little bit messy, but this is fine. Okay, so you can see right over here that it's showing the correct name. The icon is obviously messed up because we don't have the correct icon. Because right now, if we go into guild menu item, we're passing in guild. Uh, so oh yeah, so remember what I said earlier in the React in the React episodes. We would have to we will have to eventually change the prop types so for guild we're actually going to set this to partial guild because that's what we're really passing in though it's not going to have too much of an effect oh well, let's import that it's not going to break any of our code right now okay so now we actually have to get the guild icon so i'm going to show you how we can actually get the actual guild icon it's actually very very easy so to get the guild icon we actually need to uh reference the the discord cdn url so if you look on the uh, Discord documentations under resources guild, it actually shows you right, right over here. If you click on this icon hash, it'll show you how you can get the base image URL. And each uh, each uh, type of... Uh, so so basically this, this URL is the CDN. And there's different types of content that the Discord CDN hosts. So there's you know emojis, there's guild icons, there's... Uh, guild member avatar, right? So we need to just find the correct, the correct uh, URL, the correct base URL, right? Or the correct path, rather. So uh, the correct path is right over here, guild icon. So that's right over here, icons. And then we pass in the guild ID and then the guild icon. Uh, I think this is the hash in that PNG. 
So first, let's start with the base image URL. I'll actually create a helper function to do this for us. Uh, get uh, this get icon URL. We'll take in a hash. We'll also actually we'll take it. We'll just take in the the guild object because we're going to need multiple properties anyways. So we're going to first concatenate this with the base URL. We're then going to need uh, the guild icon path sets slash icons. The guild dot ID. And then the the hash, which is just the icon dot PNG. Okay, seems like that is fine. And then we can go ahead and over here we can do get killed uh, get icon URL. Get icon pass in the guild. And that should fix that for us, I hope. Let's double check. Crossing my fingers. There we go. Perfect. So you can see that I have the icon URL over here. I have the name of the server here. If I click on it, uh, obviously this is still the mock data. But remember, when we first visit the menu, when we select, when we select a, uh, when we select an item, we need to update. Remember, remember we need to, we need to update the context. Okay. Uh, I think we are updating the context, which is good. Uh, you can see that, yeah, you can see that it is still calling handle click. So it's going to update it with the guild ID, which is good. But uh, it seems like we aren't, it seems like the nav bar uh, needs to read the latest values. But right now the nav bar is using, obviously, a um, the nav bar is using uh, mock data. So that's fine. But at least we have it showing the actual guilds now. Okay, so whenever I do this, okay. One more thing that I want to mention is that, and this was actually something that someone asked in my previous Discord dashboard series. They were asking, how do you protect, how do you, how do you make sure that people cannot modify uh, like a guild, like a configuration for a guild that they should not be able to? And the reason why that was a concern was because we actually kept the, the, uh, the guild ID in the, in, the, uh, in the URL, and we used that to actually get the, to actually get the guild's configuration. Which meant, and we also, and which meant that on the back end, we would have to also be responsible for checking to see if the user actually can manage that guild, right? However, for this implementation, remember that in order to get to this page, you must select something from the menu. It must be selected from the menu, which means that we actually don't even need to worry about the user trying to manage someone else's guild that they can't, like outside of these two servers, they cannot manage any other guild because in order for them to actually manage it, uh, they need to click on the correct guild first. So that actually, hopefully that answers the concerns that some of you might have regarding that issue. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much it for this video. In the next video, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, manage some of the stuff with the context. We'll fix up the navbar a little bit too. And then we're going to get ready to actually update the prefix as well as the welcome message. So we're, we're, we're almost there. Just hold your horses. We're, we're, we're really close to being done. I'm really excited. But thank you for watching the video. I'll see you in my next episode. Peace out.